This program is brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success. And God is light. In him there's no darkness at all. So God has no problem giving us anything. The moment your faith turns to him, he releases virtue to enhance your value. Power of Salvation with David Ibiomi. God speaking concerning Abraham. He said, Abraham staggered not through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham staggered not through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Irrespective of what Abraham saw, he was not afraid. In Romans 4.20, he refused to stagger. Nothing made him to be afraid. He knew that what God had said, he was able to perform. He said, he staggered not through unbelief, but strong in faith, giving glory to God. So faith is the custodian of every man's destiny. Faith is a spiritual force that puts you in command. Abraham staggered not through unbelief, but was strong in faith. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them who Diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. He said, faith is a must. Faith is what? A must. Hebrews 11 verse 6. God said, faith is a must. Faith is what? A must. There are two musts in the Bible. Jesus said, you must be born again. After that must, the next must is faith. After Jesus was born again, he said, now faith is a must. So after you give your life to Jesus, there is another thing you must grow through. You must grow in faith in the word of God. For God to say it is impossible to please him without faith, that means it has no option. Is that clear, sir? If you say something is hard, you can solve it. If you say something is difficult, you can solve it. But if you say this thing is impossible, that means no answer to it. Now God is saying, if you don't walk by faith, you can never please him. Any other means you want to try, you can't please him. Except you walk by faith. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the moment you don't walk by faith, you displease God. And he said the words we are framed by what? The word of God through faith. So you can reshape on your life. You can redesign your destiny. You can rewrite your story by faith. And hear this and hear me well. Satan cannot get at you until he gets at your faith. Nothing gives way to the devil like fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. And I pray strongly today, fear will come to an end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear this, fear is not a psychological state. Fear is a spirit. He said, for I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. So fear is a spirit. Fear is a what? And I bind that spirit in your life in the name of Jesus. He said, for I have not given you the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. Second Timothy 1 7. But I have given you the spirit of love upon of a sound mind. Hear this truth. People are victims of what they fear. Job says something in Job 3, 
Verse 25, he said, For the thing I greatly fear has come upon me. Did you hear that? Job, the reason why he fell was because of fear. He had this truth to humble you. No matter how dedicated, no matter how righteous, no matter how holy you are, if you are afraid, you have given a way for the devil to attack you. Fear will always give the devil access to your life. Satan could not touch Job except through his fear. Job did not even know that God protected him. Satan asked God a question. He said, Has thou not form an edge round about him and all that he has? Job didn't even know, but Satan knew that he couldn't touch Job, but it was through fear Job created the way. Am I talking to someone here? Don't ever say God is teaching me less like Job. No. Satan never had access to Job until Job was afraid. Every time you are afraid, you open the door for the devil to come in. It will not have access to you. Yeah. Faith is the antidote for fear. Where fear is, faith cannot be found. And where faith is, fear cannot be found. In the Bible, we have 365 places where the Bible says, fear not, be not afraid. So God is even telling you each day has a scripture of fear not. Is someone get what God say here? We have 365 places where the Bible wrote, fear not, be not afraid. Simply God is saying to you each day, I have a scripture that can tell you don't be afraid. So I hear. A wise man said, when fear knocks at the door, send faith to open and you discover there's no one there. He said, when fear knocks at what? Send faith to open the door and you find that nobody's there. Every time faith is at work, fear is gone. And every time fear is at work, faith can walk. So I refuse to be afraid. Say it one more time. Say it in a minute. The reason why many of us are afraid is lack of faith. Lack of what? Fear comes when you lack faith. And you know, Peter was afraid while he walked on water. And when he saw the boisterous wind, the Bible said, he began to sink because of doubt and fear. Now, as he began to sink, Jesus asked him a question. He said, oh, why are you of no faith? Why did he ask why no faith? He was asking because I gave you faith. Where has the faith gone? That's what he was asking Peter. So the faith I gave to you, so it gets to a point in your life, if you don't use what God gives you, the faith itself will vanish. Faith can be extinct if you don't use it. Come on, sir, here. Glory to God. As long as you walk by sight, fear will remain, except you walk by faith. He said, for we do not walk by what? Sight, but walk by faith. 7 Corinthians 5 and 7. Now hear this. Every time you notice fear, it is an indication that faith is absent. Hello. Every time you notice what? It's an indication of faith. If you are afraid of poverty, it will come. Anything you are afraid of, you become a victim of it. If you are afraid of death, you will die quick. Anything you are afraid of is an indication you don't have faith there. Are you hearing me now? If you are afraid of unemployment, you will never get a miracle job. So build your faith on how to get a miracle job. Anything you are afraid of, you'll be a victim. Satan has no power to attack you except through your fears. There are people who have not married, yet they are afraid of having children. You know, there are women like that. There are women who, there are people who now, they are working, they are already afraid that they will, how will they live after now? Your tomorrow is sure, so why are you afraid? You will not be a victim of any evil. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. say to someone, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. Now, then what is the answer to fear? How can I overcome fear? If fear is tormenting people like that, how can I overcome fear? Hello? Because many people are afraid of one thing or the other. Some are afraid of the next meal to eat. Some are afraid of whether they will not marry. Some are afraid whether they will die quick. Some are afraid for nothing. They don't even know why they are afraid. <laughs> David Biomia will be right back. There is a, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, because the entrance of this world will give you light, and this light will so shine that darkness can't come near you again. When your faith grabs it, that hey, I don't belong to this place. If there's any economic crush, it is not for my own nation. I belong to a nation. I belong to a kingdom that does not have famine. God didn't see light before said light has come. He said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw light. So you don't see before you speak, you speak before you Join see. Join David Ibiomie on this expository series on faith for the miraculous to learn steps required for your faith to produce results and know your kingdom right as a child of God. You can get a copy of this series on DVD by calling any of these lines. 234-703-894-57-14-234-803-312-3743 Anything you are afraid of is an indication you don't have faith in that area. So uh, what is the answer to fear? How can I overcome fear? Number one. Adequate knowledge. Adequate what? Of God's word. Adequate knowledge of God's word. If I must overcome fear, I have to have adequate knowledge of the word of God. Now hear this. In Proverbs 24 verse 5, it says, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. So when knowledge comes, strength comes. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. John 8, 32. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong. And do exploits. Daniel eleven thirty two. So when you know God, no devil can make you panic. Come on, sit here. You cannot have God and be terrorized. Have you not? You should not be terrified by your adversaries. So the reason why many people have been terrorized is because they've been terrified. He said, "Don't be terrified." By your adversaries, because I'm with you always. Come on, sir. Here. <laughs> For the things which we see are temporal. For the things which we do not see are eternal. Three of us. Temporal means they are subject to change. And if they are subject to change, then it shouldn't panic you. Is that in your Bible? Second Corinthians 4, verse 18. So whatever you're seeing now is what? Temporal, which you can change with the word of God. So why are you afraid? For whatever you're seeing is what? Temporal. For the things which are not seen are eternal. The eternal things control the temporal things. And the temporal things simply means something that is subject to change. Hello? If it's subject to change, should that panic you? No. 2 Corinthians 4.18 while we look not at the things which are what? But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? That what temporal we said is subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So if they are subject to change, then it means whatever is happening is subject to change with the word of God. So you have no reason to be afraid. Come aside here. Ooh. If that situation is subject to change. Should I panic you? 
Is there any cause for alarm? No, because it's subject to change. And you can change it the way you want it. Let me show you something in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. Adequate knowledge will chase away fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Adequate what? We chase away fear. Second Peter chapter 1. And verse 3. Second Peter 1 3. Is somebody second Peter 1 3? According as his divine power had given unto us how many days? That pertain to life and God, anything that pertain to good life and God, God said he has given you. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Through what? Without knowledge you cannot take the good things of life. And look at the next verse. Whereby are given unto us great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption, having escaped the unrobbly attack, having escaped poverty, having escaped death that is in the world through loss. He said, when you partake of his divine nature, the things happening to the world can happen to you. But you cannot partake of his divine nature without knowledge, without knowledge. What is making you to fear is what somebody else is laughing after. Am I talking to someone here? He said you partake of his divine nature through what? Knowledge. Can God be killed? No. Can God be hungry? No. Can God starve? No. He said that nature of God for you to be like that you have to have the knowledge of God's word and when that knowledge comes nothing harasses you. Hello. Some of us are enjoying the best on earth here. Oh some of us don't have problem. Including you, two of us. Many of us here, we don't think of any problem. I don't think I have a problem. I don't have one. Anybody have a problem here? No. I don't have a problem. I'm enjoying the best of my life. I'm just enjoying my life. Hmm? I don't bother whether there's poverty anywhere in the world. I don't know poverty. Huh? Poverty is for those who have poor minds. There's no lack in the world. It's only lack of it. <sighs> when you live in lack, it's because you lack faith. If you walk by faith, you can't live in lack because there's always surplus when you walk in faith. The things which we see are temporary. Poverty is temporary. When you walk in faith, you know how to command money. Come on, sir, here. Was it not the same water? Peter couldn't catch fish. And when the divine nature, the one who had Jesus came, there was fish. Did they change the water? Did Peter go to another water? In fact, by fishing principles, that period Peter caught, he was not supposed to catch because that was in the daytime. But the, uh, Jesus, who had divine nature by knowledge, said to him, cast your net into the deep. You know what God said to you? Through knowledge, say with me, through knowledge. Now, you must accept responsibility for faith to produce. He said, true divine nature. Now, for instance, somebody is afraid. Let me give you an instance. You are afraid. I will show you scriptures that will make you get provoked that you are untouchable, unkillable, unmolestable. Many of you, even to enter aircraft, your heart will be up till the aircraft comes down. Two of us. Some of you behind the aircraft, and the aircraft shake. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Psalm 34. I'll show you four scriptures quickly. Turn. Psalm 34. Now, every child of God has what we call angelic protection. Say it, angelic protection. Amen. Say it, a minute. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 7. So I refuse to be afraid. Let's read together one to go. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Who encamps about you? 
Did they sleep? Angels don't sleep. So around your gate, they are more active than your security men. One angel can finish a troop of military men. One angel. An angel can destroy entire city. And God said, if you fear him, he keeps them as your bodyguards. Hello. And you know the reason why you, most of you became victims? Angels only acting to what you speak. So they are there, you don't know. And all of a sudden say, we are safe in this town. They will all leave. But angels, they, anything you say is what they obey. The moment you speak a wrong language, he said, this town, we are not safe. Oh. The angels will say, God, you said we are to his word. He has said they are not safe. You gave us charge over him. We are leaving. But the moment he said, no, no devil can come near me. They say, you have reinforced our power. We are here. So if an armed robber wants to attack you, they will slay the armed robber dead. They sell in strength. They are our messengers. They are stronger in security work than the highest military force. He said, are they not ministering spirits who are sent for to minister to us will be heirs of salvation? Hebrews 1 14. So they are there to protect us. They are invisible, but they are more real than the visible security men you put. Am I talking to someone here? They excel in great strength. They can kill the strongest man by one knock. But they hearken to the voice of his word which comes out of your mouth. So the reason why many of us have been victims is the long language we speak. One day, they wanted to attack the man Elisha. Second Kings chapter 6. Are you there? Look at verse 14. The servant of Elisha was Elisha. They wanted to attack Elisha. Are you verse 14? Therefore send he eat her horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city above. Did you hear that? They came to attack Elisha. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, are you in verse 15? Behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and what? And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? That means they, they, there was chariots everywhere to attack them. You have verse 16. Look at verse 16. And he answered that Elisha, Fear not. What did he tell him first? For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You know, he was talking about the angels. He was talking about who? And Elisha prayed. You know why Elisha prayed? He knew the young man was ignorant. And said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Those are the angels round about Elisha. Hello. <laughs> Elijah said, this young man does not know that there are invisible forces here protecting us. Open his eyes to see. If you see how many angels protect you, you'll be talking anyhow. Hello. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Have you not heard he has given his angels charge over him? He said, I give you my angels charge over him. Listen, they are our security guards. Every night, release them to work for you. When you go to sleep, say, angels of God, you've been assigned to protect me based on God's word. You've been given charge over me. For you are to minister to me as an heir of salvation. So now as I sleep, watch over my house. In Jesus' name. They will just stand there. Keep. Any attempt they slay. They don't know I'm sorry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They don't know that one. You release them to man God. They are invisible forces that makes you untouchable and unkillable. They are our own messengers. Angels are our own messengers. Hey, 
You are not to worship them. They are your own messengers. You give them order. God gave them for them to watch over us. When you read man was made lower than angel, it deceives people. Greek said man was made lower than Elohim. And that was when man was not redeemed. After Jesus was redeemed, to redeem man back to his original place, no man became like Christ. And if we are like Christ, then we cannot be that angels will be over us. The angels are far, far below us because no one is created in the image of God. That's why they ask God, say, why are you so mindful of man? We envy man so much, you love him so much. We that are angels, he didn't make us like you. So if angels envy you, why will men pity you? Angels envy men. Hope you know that. They ask God a question. Say, why is that you like man so much? You can imagine angels are envying you and you are allowing people to pity you. Because of ignorance. Because of... Okay. Have you not heard? Lo, I am with you. This is sometimes. Always. Can God be with you and any devil touch you? accepted Jesus as he is our Lord and Savior say after me Lord Jesus I may see thee. forgive me my sins wash me with your precious blood I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me today I declare you my Lord and personal Savior in Jesus name Amen. Thank you for watching the Hour of Salvation with David Ibiomi. Jesus reigns forever.